Hey guys, my name is Jan. I make new YouTube videos every Friday, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and also hit that bell notification button to be notified when I upload a new video. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. This week I'm going to talk about the law cases that students tend to remember. And these ones are either a bit weird, a bit eccentric or quite frankly are disturbing. Many of the cases discussed are cases that are used in English and Welsh law. Not all of them are, some of them are a bit more worldwide but you'll see that there's a bit of a common theme between them. The first case I want to talk about is Donoghue and Stevenson and this was a case in 1932. This case is the baseline for negligence in law and it involves a snail being in a ginger beer bottle. What happened was there were two people visiting a cafe in a place called Paisley which is just outside of Glasgow. One person, or let's call it person A, bought a drink or bought some drinks and person B had a ginger beer. The ginger beer had a snail in it. This has created some issues because person B who hadn't bought the drink but because person A had bought the drink was unable to claim in first instance because there was no contract between the seller and the third party. So this brought in a duty of care issue because the manufacturer owed a duty of care to somebody drinking it whether or not they'd purchased the drink. Now in this instance it would be personal injury because it was reasonable that the manufacturer which was Stevenson foresaw the possibility of some harm for there being a snail in the bottle that it could cause illness in which case this did so therefore they were liable for personal injury and because they had negligently checked all the bottles to make sure they were sufficient and this is the start of in law what is known as the neighbour prince. The second case I want to talk about is Carlyle and Carbolic Smoke Ball Company, which was a case from 1892. This is a contract law case, and it involves the creation of a unilateral contract written as an advertisement. So the advert was that the company could prevent flu by selling a smoke ball which you carry and if you use it correctly, it should prevent somebody from getting influenza. If they use the product correctly for three months, but still manage to get influenza, there is a reward of £100 to be given. Bearing in mind that £100 at the time would still be worth quite a bit. Carbolic Smoke Ball Company were holding £1,000 in a bank account, which was for giving out as a reward. Now this created a bit of an issue because it shows an intention to create legal relations. Uh, basically there is three elements of a contract. There is the offer and acceptance part which was the offer of a thousand pounds, a hundred pounds through the advertisement. You have to have the intention to create legal relations which is probably one of the most important parts and I'm going to use this clip now to explain why. And the reason you lose this case is very simple. When you come to court and you want to get your money back from somebody, you have to have what's called a legally enforceable contract. And for there to be a legally enforceable contract, there has to be something called an intention to create legal relations between two people. Lawrence, whatever I think of him, has said to me, and you've agreed in part, that he thought, rightly or wrongly, that this was a gift. And I certainly have no legal basis, as far as I'm concerned, to come to the conclusion that you had a legally enforceable contract. And then you need a thing called consideration, which in this case this was Carlhill buying the product. So Carlhill, who was Mrs Carhill, uh, 
was awarded the £100 due to the legal case and this established that a unilateral contract could be made because of the way they were advertising therefore the second person didn't actually have to do anything in order to form a contract they just had to follow the steps basically so Mrs Carhill actually managed to live until 1942 where she died actually having contracted influenza. The third case I want to talk about is a case from the United States and it is one that everyone in the US will probably know if you're doing law and in the UK you've probably got a good chance that you'll know it as well. It's called Marbury and Madison and it's from 1803. This is a United States constitutional law issue and is often referred to in the UK because of a process that happens over here and it's the same in the US called judicial review. Judicial review, trust me, is something that everyone seems to not like very much at law. So what this did was in the US it increased the Supreme Court power to declare a law against the Constitution as unconstitutional. So what I mean by that is if there's a contradiction. Without going into the case too much, it was basically to do with a election which Thomas Jefferson won and before that Adams, the previous president, had made some appointments but Jefferson did not recognise those appointments. What I'm going to recommend now is if you click up there somewhere or down below there is a link to a history channel video about Marbury and Madison because I think this explains it really well and I know it's something that I can't explain. The Secretary of State at the time was Madison and the judge appointed by Adams who couldn't take up his job was Marbury hence the name Marbury and Madison. So for the fourth and the fifth case I want to talk about, and I've grouped these together, is because they are often grouped together in law in general in the UK. These are Crown Against Ireland and Crown Against Burstow. I think these are probably one of the most known in law because it's to do with the idea around assault and how assault can occur. And when I'm referring to assault in this instance, I'm referring to technical assault, which technical assault is basically by conduct and language and the way that you talk or the way that you present yourself and there is no, no physical contact. So for instance, threatening somebody is a technical assault, not a common assault. Assault that people generally talk about tends to be common assault, like hitting somebody in the face, which technically is a battery. In Burstow, this was a harassment case, where there were phone calls made to victims, or a victim who was a previous partner of Burstow. These phone calls had both abusive messages and some of them were silent with heavy breathing. There was hate mail sent, there was following of the victim and posting and taking f photos of the victim. In the case of Ireland, there were also silent phone calls made, again with heavy breathing, down the phone to three victims. In both cases, it was established that they had both committed technical assault, uh, which, as I explained, assault does not equal touching at all. Uh, this of course was against section 47 of the Offences Against the Persons Act 1861 for causing psychiatric harm and that can amount to bodily harm. So what this establishes is that if you make a silent phone call even if you're breathing it feels as if somebody's down the phone and they're about to murder you or whatever. Hence, that it's an assault, because an assault, the requirement is that you have to apprehend immediate harm. And in this instance, breathing down a phone 
is the apprehension of immediate harm. Finally, I'm going to talk about the case of the Crown against Brown in 1994. Now this case, just as a warning, is quite sexual. So I'm not going to go into the details as such on YouTube, but if you're over 18 and are willing to look at some disturbing facts, this is a case to look at. Brown actually involved a acts that were consensual between homosexuals involving sadomasochism. I'm going to leave it at that. All victims, or perpetrators I should say, and victims, were of legal age and they were all consenting. So straight away, this is not actually a sexual offence. This comes under an assault or an aff offence against the person. So the approach has been argued by many lawyers because it seems a bit contradictory. In fact, this case has been argued so much that when it reached the House of Lords, it only had a three to two majority. All law students remember this case because of what it involves. So why do these cases stick? In the case of Crown and Brown, because of how disturbing some of the facts are. Carlyle, because it's a bit extraordinary. Marbury and Madison, because it's drummed into your head. Crown and Ireland and Crown and Burstow, they stick in your head because, again, the facts are a bit unusual. The reason why Donoghue and Stevenson stays in your head, because it's quite frankly weird. Why have I covered these cases and not others? So the cases I have discussed come from the seven compulsory modules that you have to do when you do a legal degree in the UK. Taught, criminal, contract, European Union, public, which is also known as constitutional administrative law, equity and land. No matter who you talk to and what, no matter what modules they did at university, they will know these seven cases. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have and have found this video very interesting and talking to law, please give a like down below as it really helps. And please leave a comment to what case you found the most interesting. If you are new to the channel, I would really recommend subscribing. There is a button down below and click that bell notification button. If you haven't done so already, give it a little ding be notified when I upload a new video, which of course is every Friday at 4pm in the UK. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Twitter and Snapchat and you get to see what I do in my law degree there. So I'd recommend doing that if you've got an interest in law. And I would also recommend staying around till the very end to see last week's video and a video that is recommended for yourself to watch on my channel. And please make sure you check out the history channel link to the Marbury and Madison case because I would really recommend checking that out so that you get some better ideas. If you enjoy the law discussion in particular I would really recommend sticking around. I think this is an area that I want to discuss more on YouTube so please let me know how you feel about the law discussion and I'll see you in a new video next week. Goodbye. Why don't you click subscribe? Make sure you check out last week's video. Why not follow me on Twitter or Snapchat?